come on, come on. We really believe in everything we're hearing here. I, this, this, this is not adding up. It does not make sense. This is, this, this doesn't have, it doesn't work this way. It just doesn't work this way. That a teenage boy, poof, just disappears. Just disappears. Like, really? Um, no sign of foul play. Well, where did, where did he go? Like, where did he go? Where, n- 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 and no leads to, to be able to find him? No one hears him leave the house? I, I don't believe this. Something is beyond a miss in this. Beyond a miss in this. Little boys, when they're 15, when they're 12, when they're, they just do not vanish. They don't. I mean, even in the Up and Vanished podcast, it was clear the Tara Grinstead didn't just up and vanish. No, it, it, that's not reality. That's not the real world. Something happened here. Something made him or caused him to leave on his own or something else happened. Neither one of them is good. I, I can't imagine in any world, in any sense, that this little guy would just tiptoe and leave on his own and go somewhere and without a trace. Nobody can find him. Like, how how could he even do that? How is that even possible? Explain that to me. How is, how is that even possible that that's a, a consideration in all this? You know, th- we just had a, a, an update from law enforcement. Um, keep his picture out there. We're doing that. Keep talking about him. We'll do that. But also, they said, things you're hearing on social media aren't true. Beware. And don't call in with tips from things that you hear in social media. And that that makes sense, right? If you just heard something in social media, someone provided some information on social media, somebody was saying something. Well, that person who had that information themselves firsthand should call it in. It shouldn't be like, calling in hearsay from what you saw or heard on, on, a, on a podcast somewhere. This, this is not right. You don't just poof and vanish. Now, listen to the words of law enforcement, what they just said. For those of you who missed their uh, quick press conference, number one, no evidence of foul play. And the parents, all the parents, have cooperated. All the parents have cooperated, and there's no evidence of foul play. All right. Am I believing that? Like, what is evident? What is evidence of foul play? They haven't found the evidence of foul play, or there isn't evidence of foul play. Those are two different things. Those are two different things. So here's, you know, and this, this is what we all have to do. Take a step back. Common sense. 15-year-old boy. And we've heard the way he's been described. It, uh, a 15-year-old boy with autism, highly functioning, smart, achieving. What, whatever issues he may or may not have. Could be related, but it may have nothing to do with any of this. It may have nothing to do with any of this. I am trying to figure out how there's zero evidence of anything. Okay? That's kind of where we are, right? 
Now, one thing that was said today, and this this could be significant, one thing from the law enforcement update, and they didn't volunteer the information, but it came from a question. And I thought the questions, we got much more information, which is why you need journalists and, and people at these press conferences. Um, the questions sort of flushed out more um, information than we would have gotten otherwise. Uh, they've confirmed that they found a pair of glasses. Now, they didn't say they were his. They didn't say they weren't his. Still kind of looking at that. You know, maybe testing for DNA or other things. I don't know. But they found some glasses. I mean, should it take more than, I don't know, 90 seconds to figure out if they're his glasses? Tons of pictures of this of this young child. If he's your child... You know the glasses you bought. There's pictures with the glasses. It should take 30 seconds to figure out if these are the same type of glasses and then perhaps take them for further testing. We don't know where they found the glasses. But if if the glasses are nothing like any glasses he's ever worn then there's no reason to do any further testing. Like, what can you test? You can test the prescription on the glasses. You can test for fingerprints. You can test for DNA. These are all the things you can test on these glasses to see if they're connected. Now, they were very thankful uh, to the media, to the public for keeping his picture, Sebastian's picture out there, which is extremely significant and important. Um, But they've done this five-mile radius search that has come up empty. Does that mean he's he's not in the five mile somewhere? No, it means he could be there if he's in a place where um, he doesn't want to be found or if he's in a place where someone else doesn't want him to be found. And, I, and I'm going to presume he's alive. I like to presume that he's alive. I, I, you know, you can't confirm that. You don't know. It's been It's been a month. It's been cold. What what did he leave with? Did he leave with it? Like, this is the part. Like, how do you get out of the house? How do you get out of the house with no one knowing? I, I guess no ring, no alarm. Maybe you're a sound sleeper. All of that's possible, I guess. But do you... Do you, do you, does he, the door, was the door locked? Was it not locked? Like, well, like if you're leaving this house, is it one of those doors where you can lock it from the inside? You just close it and then it automatically locks. Could be. Is there a bolt? Is there a deadbolt that you usually put on at night? Important details. Did he take anything with him? With him? Like, could he, could he be, abdu- could someone have broken in, taken him and gotten him out? I, that seems highly unlikely. He'd have to leave of his own volition for some reason. And that's where, again, potential foul play comes in. Like, why, why, is, he, why is he leaving? Why this day? Why this night? Is it, is it a runaway? And if it's a runaway, how do we not find him? With, with this level of search, this level of resources, cameras everywhere. There's cameras everywhere. I, I can't believe what I'm hearing. That there's no evidence of foul play. Parents are cooperating. Now, obviously, everyone's looking at uh, behavior and all of this. Great to see Danielle back. Um, everyone's going to evaluate the people closest. That's the way the investigations go. They've they've spoken out a little bit of delay initially, but they've spoken. They've, I mean, they've spoken to um, Nancy Grace. They've spoken to uh, true crime folks on YouTube. Sebastian's father is speaking to everybody. Everybody, he's out there searching. Um, I have certain points of reference that I call upon in my career to help me analyze the reaction of parents. And there was a case, little girl goes missing, I believe it was in Missouri. 
And we had an interview with her father and we did the interview, but it was a, he was literally on an ATV eight o'clock at night in the dark, searching for his missing daughter. He wouldn't stop. They found her. It was a neighbor, abducted her, murdered her. Um, took a, a couple days. He's been convicted. But that father, speaking to that father who was, would do anything and everything, number one, to get the word out, to make sure everyone was talking about his daughter, getting her picture out, but also himself physically and literally searching. He wasn't going to sleep. He was not going to go to sleep. And I use that as sort of a baseline. And obviously, as in everything else, people are different. People are different. But, you know, I, I, it, it, it's troubling. It seems like dad is taken off of work and is just searching and is like literally boots on the ground out there. Um, mom and stepdad, are they looking? I, 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 I don't convict people. I just don't convict people. I just analyze people and, and what's going on. Like this is, this is baffling. This is befuddling. This makes no sense. It makes no sense. You just get up. He's, he's gonna. He's gonna tiptoe out. He's gonna sneak out. Is there is there any evidence of anything happening online for someone that would lure him in the middle of the night? Always possible. Always possible. Someone that you meet, uh, you know, with the headsets on when you're playing your video games. All of this is possible. All that has to be. Has to be investigated, but they're telling us no sign of, of foul play. To me, that would be foul play. Any sort of inappropriate conversation or conversation where he is seemingly being lured to leave. Discerning eight's been searching with Seth Rogers, the dad. He's been out there. He's been out there looking. Like, literally looking. Right? And and people are all different. People's personalities are different. Uh, people come across different. But what 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 I think isn't different generally in the in the human species is when our child is missing, we are searching. Day and night, night and day. And I understand people have to work. People people have to sustain themselves. Um, but uh, how could you not be out there? How could you not be out there? Like, like pedal to the metal. I, I, I hate to think about what I would do because I don't want to think about being in that position. It's the worst position in the world. That all these parents are in. Again, the highlights, if you missed it, from law enforcement. It wasn't the longest press conference. wasn't the shortest. They told us ahead of time there wasn't going to really be new information. But they confirmed that they found glasses, but that was it. Not where they found them. No indication they've been connected in any way, but <clears throat> also saying be wary, not everything you're hearing on social media is true, and basically law enforcement is not speaking to anyone. When they speak, they come out and they speak or they put it on their social media. Um, they've gotten more than 300 tips, and regardless of the tip, they they act on it. They respond to it and they follow up. So that obviously keeps them busy following up on these tips. But the longer this goes now, the more the case spreads. Here's the question. Here's the question. Like, how far is he going on his own? How far is he walking? Where's, how is there no, no camera activity anywhere that we're, that we're seeing? 
this is this, you know, there, there are people who like to walk away from life and not be found. Usually they're adults and they're, you know, a little more sophisticated about the whole thing. Like they just want to go off the grid. 15 year olds don't want to go off the grid. 15 year olds want to go on the internet. They don't want to go off the grid. Now, what would, what would cause a 15 year old to leave is something terrible was happening at home. Madeline Soto wanted to live in the woods. We know why. Hello to Linda. We've got folks on Facebook. We're streaming on Facebook. We're streaming on YouTube. Um, we're streaming uh, also on X and on Twitch. Um, soon we'll be on TikTok live streaming. Soon. Um, now, Information coming out, and you're you're hearing different stories, um, and different interviews. Now, stepdad's given a bunch of interviews. He gave some really off the cuff, nighttime interviews where he seemed to provide a little more information than he would have otherwise. Uh, and I heard him say that he saw a video, and I think it was from the restaurant of his son, and that is, you know, evidence of of his son where he was between the time that he dropped him off and when he went missing. Um, I hate that term, went missing. But how else do you describe what's happening here until you know, until you know what it is? But the no, the no foul play, no evidence of foul play, does that mean blood? Does that mean things... Things kind of pushed out of the way. It's there's there's no evidence of him leaving the home. There's no evidence of him leaving the home at any time. Think of some other cases. Maya Miliette, but again, she's an adult. In that case, Maya went missing. There were videos in the neighborhood. You saw her outside with her kids during the day. You saw her go inside, and then you never see her come outside again. You see the car backed into the, into the garage. That's called circumstantial evidence, right? People don't just vanish. But what are the circumstances here, and, and, and what are they leading to? They're leading to nothing right now. And this is a case where this isn't a case that's been put on the, you know, on the back burner. Yeah, we're going to have to do that, Sarah. We're going to have to get our body language folks in and take a look at, at some of these uh, interviews from different places. Off the record, what would be the reason for LE law enforcement to bring in the Secret Service? That's stuck. Um, yeah, that's interesting, too. Secret Service, uh, you know, it's another law enforcement agency. What's, what expertise does Secret Service have that the FBI doesn't have? Is it just a matter of having... Um, more boots on the ground, uh, more access to testing. I, I found that unusual as well, the fact that Secret Service was involved. You, when you think of Secret Service, you think of protecting you know, the president. Like, why are they investigating a crime? But they do have some jurisdiction over areas. But in this case, um, I'm not sure if it was just a matter of getting some more help from whoever had some spare bodies, you know, and, and, and maybe that's it. Or maybe there's something that that they're testing that they would have the ability to test the Secret Service. But if you've got the FBI, what do you need the Secret Service for? Makes no sense. I'm going to try to find that out tonight. We're going to uh, try to book some uh, folks, maybe an FBI agent or someone from the federal government um, to answer that question. Because that was something else that was unusual, right? Why is, it, why is the Secret Service looking for a missing child from Hendersonville? And, uh, Tennessee makes no sense. Hmm. Gen X, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
keeping law and order here. <laughs> um, let's see. A lot of reactions to the interviews, right? After seeing his ex-wife's interview, she may just be under his control. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Is 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 there more here? Letitia Stout, right? Yeah. That was right, Letitia Stout out in Colorado. Like how, you know, bits and pieces there, but there was evidence of foul play uh, right from the get-go, and there were the ridiculous stories from Letitia Stout. And there was physical evidence in that case left behind in the garage, as I recall. Um, although they did not permit cameras in the courtroom for that uh, case. This is interesting from Love. I believe you didn't have a way of internet functions being in contact with strangers, therefore the gaming aspect is void. That's what his that's what his dad was saying, right? That on his at least and on, his, on his phone, there was no internet. You could send text messages, you could take pictures, you can make a phone call. Um, simple functions like that. Which is smart, right? That's that's a smart, smart way. Not all kids are gonna go for it. And but the other part is, right? Kids are smart. Kids are smart. So even if we try to control and limit their access to things, sometimes some kids figure out a way. So I don't think you can, based upon whatever the rules or the ground rules were, necessarily completely eliminate that. But I agree with you, love. Uh, I think you're right on 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 target with that. Uh Dreamer JS, they found glasses. They won't say they're his. Um, he was a child with autism. He didn't leave the house. Mom knows something. I've seen these cases for 10 plus years. Oh, Zara Baker. I remember Zara Baker from North Carolina. Notorious case. Yeah. So there, there has, see, there has to be evidence of something. There, there can't be evidence. This is, this is what I don't believe, that there's, there's no evidence of him leaving the house and there's no evidence of foul play. Like neither one of them. We don't just vanish. Where are we in, in the timeline and all of this, right? What have they been able to verify in terms of the stories of where he was and when he was there? What, what is the independent evidence? The, the things that, like surveillance video, like um, a phone call, um, kind of like a text message, although people can jump on your phone and send text messages for you. So that's not as great. But where is, is that type of evidence and how does it work in with whatever timeline they're working off of right now? And when, when can they pinpoint like the last moment, the last moment that there is proof of life? To me, that is so important in determining a time. Like, where is that one piece of information that's not based upon what someone within the circle or in, within the household uh, is telling you, but some independent level of evidence, like a stranger eyewitness could be that, a video time stamped obviously could be that, some level of Digital communication could be that where we have absolute proof that we really believe in that, okay, at this moment he was alive. And then you take that time and then from that point forward, you got to figure out who was where doing what with whom. Right? That's that's how you have to work that time. Like there's all the things that happened before that that, you know, the trip to the, the restaurant and everything else, dad dropping off, people you may have come in contact with are very significant. You know, if this is some level of an abduction case or something like that, like something happened, like something, ha it can't be that nothing happened here. What I'm hearing from all different voices everywhere that are speaking about this, I'm talking about the family law enforcement and others, is that there's nothing. Like, how could there be nothing? That's that's impossible. That's impossible.
Wow. Pretzel crisps and dip. Thank you. I could probably have the dip if it's lower carb. Type 1 diabetic. And I had some carbs for lunch, so I want to pull it back here a little bit. So no press pretzels or crisps uh, for me right now. But I could have some dip. Um, I vaguely remember that story. But that's four-day search. We're a month out. I mean, law enforcement had to have been in and out of everything in the home. Had to be. Looking at anything and everything. In the home, around the home. No evidence of foul play. Everyone's cooperating. And like, where is he? Like, wh wh where would he go? What was he wearing? Was he wearing all black? Did he have shoes on? Are all his shoes accounted for? We have a, a finite number of shoes. We know it's either pair A, pair B, or pair C. Does he have slippers? Does he have socks? Are there socks? You know, have, have they done that analysis? Have they come to a conclusion on that? Again, the, the big warning in this that came from the, the update was don't believe everything you're hearing on social media, especially if there's allegations that there, someone's getting information from law enforcement because they deny that they're providing information to anyone. The one thing we found that was new was a confirmation that they found glasses. Were they his glasses? I don't know. They didn't tell us. Where'd they find them? I don't know. They didn't tell us. So this raises another question about the glasses finding them. The five mile radius search that was done, this intensive search. You know, when, where were these glasses found? Who found them? Who found them also? Yeah, I, I, I just have a hard time beginning with the premise that there's no indication or no evidence of him leaving the house and there's no evidence of foul play. Those two do not compute. It's one or the other. Like, could the perfect crime have been committed in the house? Could the perfect crime have been committed out of the house? Or is he a runaway who's hiding? A runaway who got abducted? Someone who was lured somewhere? Someone that was playing a game? Was he sleepwalking? Is that where we're going now? Like, come on, none of this is... We don't check common sense at the door. And there's no, there's no evidence that anyone has done anything. Zero evidence that anyone has done anything. Now... Hush pup. If there's no sign of foul play at the house, maybe he never got home after dinner. See? Now that makes sense. No foul play at the house. Something happened before he got to the house. But if something happened before he got to the house, then some people are lying. Right? So where is 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 dinner? Is that the last like independent source of proof of life? the video and eyewitnesses from, from dinner. Is that, is that, is that where they're working from? Is that where this is going? And I'm looking at these pictures right here. These are two different pairs of glasses. How many pairs of glasses did he have? How many pairs of glasses are at home? Isn't that what, I mean, with the glasses, isn't that the easiest way to figure the whole thing out? Negative deduction, like, okay, how many pairs of glasses does he have? How many pairs of glasses are at home? Are any glasses from home missing? Oh, there is one pair missing? Okay. Here's a pair we found. Show mom and dad a picture. Show dad a picture. Does that look like a pair of his glasses? I mean... 90 seconds to figure out the glasses situation, but um, I don't know. There might be there's something to it. Maybe they are similar and they're doing further testing. Mm.
Well, this is KK. Thank you. Uh, KK watching on YouTube. Um, this, this is bothering a lot of people. Stepdad went back to work. Okay. I get it. People's, um, sustainability, financial sustainability, right. In a situation like this, um, you know, maybe you don't have a ton of money tucked away. You've got bills. I get it. I get it. That's a, that's, that's reality. But stepdad goes back to work and then mom goes with him and they're working out of the area and she's not there searching. And I heard her tell Nancy Grace that, well, he could be anywhere. Yeah, he could be anywhere, but is it more likely that he's like closer to home? What if he like showed up at home? Wouldn't you want to be there if you like knocked on the door and came home? I, I'm, you know, again, it's it's hard to judge other people in the way they act and react. I just go by like parents that I've come across and what they've done. But I get it. Yeah, stepdad going back to work. I understand. Got to pay bills. Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Think about this for a second. Now, some people are interpreting things a little differently than I am from the uh, from what happened today. But they reiterated everyone has been cooperating. cooperating. There's no evidence of foul play. It doesn't mean anyone's been cleared of anything. And it doesn't mean that everything being told or in, within the guise of cooperation is truthful. Let me just go in history. There have been cases. I'm trying to think of it. Well, oh, you know who cooperated? It was Casey Anthony. But she cooperated by lying. Zanny the nanny. Zanny the nanny, right? So that's a level of cooperation. So that's a great point, Michelle. Thank you. Um, so there's different ways to support. There's different ways um, to cooperate. But to me, it comes back like, let's take one moment here. And, and again, none of us know. None of us know what happened. We all know what questions we have. But this is a little this is a little guy, right? He's 15. What if he he left on his own volition and was wandering away for whatever reason, you know, a, a mental break or or something that he concocted in his head that he wanted to do? or he wanted to get away from something or someone and he's out there somewhere hiding, you know, trying not to be found because he doesn't want to go back to where, where he came from for whatever reason. That's something happened that made him leave on his own volition to sneak out. Wouldn't you want to find him? Wouldn't you want to find now the other way to look at this? If you're if you're in the house living with him and he's your child, and you know for a fact that nothing bad happened in your house, that everything you said is true, right? Everything you've said is true. And you went to sleep and he's gone. You know that nothing happened to him. You know that he had to leave that house. So You, you know what happened because it's, it's only like he had to leave the house. And if you're that parent and you know nothing happened inside here, we didn't do anything. And now he's missing. He had to leave. How would you not like be there searching, 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 trying to find him looking under Every like, every barn, every, every whatever to find him. Because you would know 
that there's no reason to investigate anything else. The, 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 the way to investigate this is to follow, find his tracks, find his footprints, which have they found? And, and walk the way he would have walked. Like you could say he could be anywhere, but could he really be anywhere? Where could he be? I, I, after a month, he could be in a lot of places, but people are looking for him. So if he's just walking and wandering around, somebody would have spotted him. Like if he's if he's sneaking around at night, it's going to be very suspicious or unusual to see someone walking at night. And if he's walking in day, it's broad daylight. People are going to see him. Cameras are going to see him. He's got to eat. Like, ugh. I don't believe what I'm hearing. I don't believe it. There's no evidence of foul play. And if there's no evidence of foul play, mom isn't out there looking. What? I can't believe that that's the, that's the reaction. And it doesn't mean guilt. It just means like, why wouldn't you be looking? Explain to me why you're not. Dad is, and you can, you know, you say what you want about dad. He, I mean, he's a, he's a little bit of a character, but this guy is, is, is his feet are on the ground and he's looking and he's talking to anyone who'll talk to him about it. Now, I don't know what the, 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 how things are between mom and dad, their exes, I get it, but in, in moments like this aren't necessarily going to bring them together. It was very unusual. The Gabby Petito case was very unusual. Those families um, and those parents and uh, step parents who were really parents, there's no difference, um, were amazing in the way they came together. That's 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 the exception. That's not the rule. So we shouldn't think anything's unusual that they're not like together out there unified, um, but independently out there, looking, searching, hoping, praying. I don't know. And like, if he just walked out, why wouldn't he just walk back? And if he walked back, wouldn't you want to be in the house when he walked back? I don't know. There are questions. These are just questions. And I look at this 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 photo, and I mean, they look broken. They look broken. And you can be broken for many different reasons, but um, you can be broken because your child's missing. You absolutely could. All right, this is the part of the show where I've got to, um, tonight, 8 o'clock, obviously, we're on this story. Um, Court TV, your front row seat to justice, 8 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Eastern. And the show is live. The show is unscripted. Um, it's really the only uh, true crime show of its kind on the air. I mean... There are other people doing it on television to a certain extent, but this is all we do. I mean, this is all we do, the big stories, the big cases. And then sometimes when you have a case that's like Murdoch, the big trials as well. Um, but it's live. It's unscripted. Um, we bring in guests. We bring in experts. We analyze the things that we have. We try to put pieces together. Um, we try to ask all those questions. So that's what I do every night, 8 to 10 on uh, Court TV. And tonight, obviously, we'll be talking about this story. A um, couple of minutes, I got to be in a meeting. They're all going to be waiting for me um, and, and to talk about this. So uh, I appreciate everyone watching. Um, I'm, I'm an ASD here. Our kids are especially attracted to bodies of water. Divers involved. Well, that's that's another part, right? There's water everywhere. In this case, thank you, Kathleen. Appreciate it. Um, so we'll look at the latest tonight. Bring on some folks connected to the story. Bring in some experts. Get some perspective of all this. But really, from my perspective, the way I am seeing what's happening right now is I, I, I just can't believe what I'm hearing. This doesn't make sense. And I don't think it makes sense to you either. Um, and it doesn't mean anyone in particular is guilty. It just means that um, there has to be evidence of something at some point. People don't just disappear.
They don't. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. All right. I really have to go. I wanted to stay longer um, today. I usually usually go on a little bit longer than this, but I got to keep this one just a little tight because I got to get um, to work to get, prepare for the show tonight. Uh, but my guess is as things continue to develop and we learn more and more and more, um, we'll be on. Again, I'm on YouTube, Facebook, X, Twitch, um, starting on TikTok pretty soon. We do it live. That's the way I do it. I, I post a couple of videos here and there. I may post some videos, but generally I'm going live. I'm going to do it live. Um, that's the way we do it. And also like live because we get the uh, interaction uh, from the folks uh, watching in the chats. All right. Shalon. Julie knows me. Gotcha. Shalon. They're, what's, if that's your legal name, what's your illegal name? But uh, thanks so much, uh, Shalon. And maybe we should have Shalon on the show tonight. Talk about the search. She was out there um, looking. Um, all right. I've got to go. I've got just a couple minutes to get ready for the meeting. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, my name is Vinny Politan, Core TV. You know it, 8 to 10. We're also here on YouTube all the time. Please subscribe. Please hit the like button. And if you're on Facebook, please share it. Over 1 million followers on Facebook. Just starting out on YouTube, but things are growing uh, pretty quickly here. Pretty quickly. So happy about that. Um, have a fantastic day. And of course, I will see you all tonight. And as always, please don't forget to hug the kids.